from Ron, the official statement out of the CPC plenum. I spoke to Peter Botelier. He's a China Studies professor at John Hopkins School of Advance of International Studies, and I asked him what he thought. Well, I was expecting this third plenum to spell out in some detail at least what lies ahead for the broad economic policy making over the next five to ten years, particularly with regard to financial sector reform, with regard to social reforms, including the hookah system reform, and fiscal reforms. Part of the fiscal reforms is the possible reform of rural land markets, which is an important aspect of it, and there has been very little on, in, on these subjects in the communique that you and I have seen. You think the leadership, I mean, there are obviously some, some challenges facing the Chinese economy. Is there anything that looking, they're looking at in terms of challenges or specific roadblocks that they may have to, may, may have to perhaps think again due to the complexity of the situation? Yeah, the, the situation is much more complex than it has ever been before, but it would be wrong to think that the challenges facing this group of leaders are much greater than the challenges pre facing previous groups. The challenges in 78, if anything, were even greater than today. The challenges in 92, the, the 14th Party Congress, and 93, the third plenum, were at, any, were at least as complex and as challenging as the, the, the agenda today. Um, but China, has the, the economy has become so much larger and so much more complex. So it's much harder to understand the issues, it takes more time to explain them, to reason the, the various possible courses of action. So I'm not surprised that this communique is rather vague in its uh, specifics. In the last two decades, we've seen probably the biggest global worldwide migration from the poor, the poverty, into the working and middle class, specifically China. The communique, and we've stressed over the past week that the leadership is concerned and they want to have a better life for their citizens. Mm -hmm. Where do they go from here? Well, there are several things that have been contemplated and have been the subject of discussions for quite some time. Perhaps the single most important new direction to take is to significantly water down the urban uh, registration system, the, the household registration system, in Chinese known as the hukou system. That will, over time, because it cannot be done very quickly, bring to an end the bifurcation of China's society, where you have an urban elite and a much larger rural population which is not, uh, doesn't have access to the same privileges as the urban elite. If that system can be broken down over time, you get a totally new China. I see that as an enormous challenge. It has significant fiscal implications. It has significant social security implications. And it has significant implications for the pace and the quality of urbanization. I wouldn't expect that <clears throat> a further relaxation of the hukou restrictions would lead to a mass migration. You already have 250, 260 million migrants living in cities who currently, under the current system, don't have access to the same social services. That is the immediate challenge, because you have two kinds of citizenship. You have the elite urban population, there's an urban hukou, and you have all those migrants who, who don't have access, and their children don't have access. So in addition to that, of course, you may get a temporary acceleration in migration. But the most migration has already taken place. It's been the last 20 years already. Some just stunning statistics, the, the sheer number of uh, yeah. demographic uh, changes. I want you to talk a little bit about the U.S.-China relationship in terms of what could come out of this meeting over the next week in terms of further details, how that might impact the United States or the rest of the world for that yeah. matter. Well, the, the third plenum has been looked towards by the U.S. and many countries in the world as a benchmark event in the history of the party and the history of China's economic reforms. So this has been followed with great interest by lots of people in this country and in the West generally and in other emerging markets. What I think most Americans would hope to come out of this 
is a further relaxation of political control of the economy. Greater reliance on market forces, uh, less power to the state-owned enterprises, more competition, um, and a further opening up of Chinese markets to foreign companies, foreign investment, particularly in the service sectors. That was Peter Potelier, economist and China scholar from John Hopkins University.